Hey everyone, in this tutorial what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking a character in FBX format, importing it into iClone and applying some uh, animation to it, and then I'm going to be exporting the uh, body and facial animation into my uh, game project in Unity. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing today. You can see I'm just fooling around with my uh, FBX character in Maya here. This is the uh, Hunter character that comes with our facial animation pack. If I go into a wireframe mode, you can see that it has a simplified uh, G5 gaming bone structure, as well as some facial bones here which uh, allow for some uh, facial animation uh, within iClone that can be exported to Unity. All right, so let's uh, take the first step here. We're gonna take this FBX file into 3D Exchange. So go to my desktop here. You can see I have huntershave.fbx, and this is what I wanna import into 3D Exchange. So I'm just gonna click and drag that, open up 3D Exchange here, and drag my character in. Now the first item of business in 3D Exchange is I wanna set up the uh, facial animation uh, profiles. Um, here in the expression editor. Uh, so I can utilize the facial puppet tool in iClone as well as the automatic lip sync. Now this is not a long procedure, it's, it's very easy. Um, it's, there's a standard um, muscle structure for uh, all iClone uh, facial rigs. So what I can do is just press OK here and it's going gonna, it's gonna to show me that it has detected that this is a uh, standard Maya bone rig and it's going to ask me if I automatically want to uh, convert this. All right, so you can see right there it says we've analyzed the character data structure. I'll just select yes here and it'll automatically uh, map the uh, bones of my character here. If I go to convert to non-standard, you can see all the bones have been mapped, and I can test out any of these uh, default uh, test motions here, such as a basic block, anything like that. All right, so we'll just cancel out of here. And what I want to do next is go into my expression editor here. So I'm going to open up the expression editor and just uh, pan over my character here so we can see him a little bit better. Let me move my expression editor up a little bit as well. We'll focus on the face of my character here. So you can see that the head orientation has already been uh, already been set up because the head bones have already been mapped in my character. Um, the eye bones have already been set up as well. You can see all the uh, the eye movement has already been uh, taken care of. However, the jaw movement, um, which is utilized for the facial animation tools, has not been set up yet. So what I need to do is I'll select this uh, drop jaw thumbnail here, and with uh, auto apply click down, I'll just select my uh, jaw root here from the hierarchy on the left. And I'll press the W hotkey to bring up my gizmo, and I can move the, uh, the jaw down. So that looks pretty much like a drop jaw there. And uh, I'll move on to the leftward uh, thumbnail, move his uh, jaw to the left, too far, and rightwards will do vice versa, move it to the right. So you can see now that I have a drop jaw leftward, rightward, and all the other um, profiles have been uh, set up as well, automatically. As for the uh, vice me tab here, this is what iClone utilizes for the automatic lip sync. So I need to define each one of these uh, facial uh, shapes to, to uh, correspond with each individual facial shape. So for example, if I use the woo, um, what I want to do is create a kind of a woo shape with the uh, mouth here. So we'll just uh, click on the facial bones here. We'll kind of move his uh, cheeks in there. Maybe uh, select this uh, other facial bone on the left here, bring that in. And I want to kind of curl these, uh, rotate these lips outwards here. You can do that by using the E hotkey and uh, bring it down. And then we'll select the uh, upper lip there as well, bring that up, and you rotate that outwards. So there we go. Maybe not the best woo in the world, but uh, you can see uh, essentially, just uh, pick away from this. There we go. So you can see the uh, woo shape. There we go. You can see that's more or less, more or less a woo shape there. So you can actually spend some time um, defining the uh, mouth shapes for all of these different uh, visemies here, which will correspond to your lip sync tool in iClone. All right, so we'll go to the muscle tab here, and the muscle tab is very similar, except here you want to uh, set the uh, facial movements um, for the uh, facial puppet tool in iClone. So for example, raise brow inner left, we can just grab that one and raise it up. Raise brow inner right, we can do the same thing for the other eyebrow right here. And you can see, boom, those already have been taken care of. So you just do the rest for the, uh, for the other thumbnails here as well. And in the custom tab here, there's a number of custom profiles that you can set up for your uh, facial puppet tool. And I'll show you that in a moment in iClone, but I'm not gonna spend so much time in 3D Exchange. We already have the uh, completed character set up in iClone here. Uh, there's my character right there. I'll show you, first of all, you can go into the uh, facial animation tools here in the animation tab. And if I go to puppet, you'll see what I mean by the uh, facial profiles here. There's a number of different uh, custom profiles here, which correspond to the uh, custom tab that I just showed you in 3D Exchange there. 
You can see there's a happy one. This one's a little bit angry. Um, and of course, you can use the ones from other characters as well, such as Chuck, our default character. There's a, kind of a scared template. There's also the face key editor down here. If I wanted to apply uh, facial uh, keyframe editing to individual facial parts, if I select, say, for example, my, uh, my eyebrows and my nose, and I click and drag, I can kind of scrunch my uh, eyebrows and nose together. I can clear all those and maybe just uh, do the jaw by itself. So you can do that and you can do uh, keyframe editing with that and that's also defined by uh, your muscle definitions or your expression definitions that you do in the expression editor in uh, 3D Exchange as well. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to first apply some uh, lip syncing to this character. So over here on the right in the modify panel you can see I can record my own voice, I can open up, open up a uh, vocal track or I can use text to speech. I'm just going to open up a vocal track here and load in this bragging.mp3. can't touch me because I'm from the internet. So you can see it does a fairly decent lip sync. Uh, what iClone does is it analyzes the wavelength of your uh, of your audio file there and creates some phonemes, uh, analyzes the phonemes as well there. So you can see that um, if I close down my motion track and open up my uh, facial track here, it's created an audio clip. And I can open the uh, Visemi, uh, scroll down the Visemis here, press Control plus. You can see all the uh, keyframes that's created for the uh, Visemi shapes in my uh, track there as well. Now, if I wanted to modify that, for I'm example, from the internet. you can see he says internet at the end, but his kind of his mouth was a little bit too uh, wide at the end. You can see if I double click on uh, any of these here, like this S Z, for example, if I double click, I can change any of those uh, lip sync shapes. Um, I can change the uh, level of expressiveness as well. Bring that down. Bring that up. But what I want here is I want to actually just uh, delete this one. I can delete it or I can just press this none here and that'll give it a none shape. So I'll just close that down and give it a neutral shape rather. All right, so that looks more like a t. Okay, so I'll just play that back one more time. Because I'm from the internet. Okay, so it looks a little bit better. I just want to show you how quickly you can uh, modify the uh, lip syncing uh, within iClone. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to layer on some uh, facial puppet animation on top of this. Okay, so I'm going to go into my Facial Puppet tool once again, load that up. I'm going to use this Attractive Profile and this uh, Angry Profile here. You can see that uh, this is going to be the result, right? I can move my mouse around and adjust this. If I want, I can also click this and move the head around. This is where the uh, head rotation was defined in the Expression Editor there as well. But I'm just going to leave it like this for now. We're going to do that later um, using different tools. So I'm just going to do a quick recording here. can't touch me because I'm from the internet. Okay, so I just did a quick uh, little expression uh, puppet there and uh, what I'm going to do next is on top of that, since his uh, body is not really moving, it doesn't really look that natural, I want to give him some body movement here. So I'm going to go into uh, motion here and I'm going to go into the uh, motion puppet tool which is very similar to the facial puppet tool except for the body. So there's a number of different profiles here, um, ah! other profiles. Um, ha! dancing, and I'm going to use this actually this taunt one here. Now, if I preview this taunt one, ha! so what? You can't touch me because I'm from the internet. You can see it actually loops twice before the uh, anime before the lip sync is actually finished. So what I want to do is slow down the speed here a little bit. We'll slow it down to about uh, 6970 there, and I'm going to record now, and you'll be able to see that the uh, speed is now a lot more suitable. Um, syncs better with the uh, lip sync. So we'll go ahead and record that. Ha! So what? You can't touch me, because I'm from the internet. Okay, and press space whenever that's finished. Okay, so I'll just play that back really quickly for you. Ha! So what? You can't touch me, because I'm from the internet. Okay, so there's my animation that I'm going to export into Unity. There's a number of different things you can do with the uh, body puppet tools, uh, modify it as well, modify the motion but you can check that out in other tutorials. So I'm just gonna close this down for now. What I'm gonna do is open up the uh, Direct Puppet tool here. So in Direct Puppet, what I'm gonna do is some custom, this is where you um, can real-time puppet individual body parts. So for example, I'm gonna select the head here. I'm gonna select Primary Rotation. And if I preview, ha! you can so see I can what? move my head around according me. to my mouse movements. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is add some emphasis to his, uh, his speech here, rather. Um, just press Record here and do some nodding and, and uh, shaking of the head. Ha! So what? You can't touch me, because I'm from the internet. Okay, 
So there's my head animation. I'll just play that back really quickly. Ha! So what? You can't touch me, because I'm from the internet. All right, so that's uh, that's the uh, facial animation tool there. Or sorry, that's the direct puppet there where you can uh, puppet individual body parts. What I'm gonna do is one last uh, edit here using this edit motion layer tool here. Now this is for a uh, human IK uh, keyframe editing. You can see there if I uh, grab the uh, hand, if I move it along, it utilizes uh, Autodesk's uh, human IK technology there. So what I'm gonna do first, and I'm gonna press F3 and go into my timeline. We can close down the face track here and go into the motion track. We'll just bring my character down a little bit here and this uh, window down a little bit as well. And what I'm gonna do is at this ah! point here, So what? where he says, you can't touch me. What I wanna do is I wanna break that clip. And what that's gonna do is create uh, two separate clips here. And at the end of the part where I want to create my keyframe edit, I'll break you it again. You can't touch me which will be, if I zoom this out a little bit, about right here when his arms come back down. Okay, so I'm gonna break that again once more. And what I wanna do is create an edit here. Um, I'm actually gonna go to the uh, first frame of the uh, second clip. And what I wanna do is uh, right click on the frame and select remove motion, and select remove motion from my right arm. So let's play this back and see what that did. You can't touch me. What that did is it removed all the animation uh, that was originally there from the right arm, which is good because we want to create a custom animation here. So I'm going to go here into the motion layer, add a keyframe, and where he says, you can't touch, touch. me, I'm going to actually bring his uh, arm up really quickly so he's kind of pointing to himself. Okay, so we'll just do that, grab his elbow here, do the same thing, just bend that up. And we can maybe just uh, rotate the hand a little bit. Maybe we don't want the uh, shoulder to be too far up. That should be about good. Hold on, let me zoom over a little bit there. And the cool thing about uh, the uh, key for, or the motion layer editor here is you can actually grab the hand. You can clench all the all the fingers at the same time here, like this. So with this keyframe here, I'll just close them all here, and uh, I'll bring the thumb out. You want to rotate that thumb out a little bit more as well. Whoops. There we go. You kind of see that better from the side there. He's saying, you can't touch me. We can maybe even uh, rotate his uh, hand up a little bit there as well. All right, so uh, for that part, he's going to say, you can't touch me. You can't touch me, because I'm from... You can see that uh, after the clip ends, that the uh, hand remains in that, in that heightened position. So what we want to do is we actually want to go back over here. We want to uh, copy, and, uh, copy and paste this uh, keyframe for as long as we want the thumb pointing to be in, in effect. And then over here, Close to the end of the clip, you can see there's a blending that goes back to the original clip. However, what I want to do here is I want to select, go down here, and I want to select this uh, reset button here. What that'll do is it'll reset it back to the original position of the motion um, on the clip. So you can see now. You can't touch me because I'm from the internet. You can see now there's a fairly smooth uh, transition you can't touch back me, to the original. Because I'm from the internet. Okay, so that's the motion that I'm going to export into Unity. We'll just zoom out uh, for a sec there and view the uh, entire animation once before we export it. Ha! So what? You can't touch me, because I'm from the internet. All right, so what I want to do is open up this collect clip track here now. And I want to uh, zoom out my timeline a little bit. And the entire section of the animation that I want to export, I can just left click and drag along and right click on that track and select add motion plus to library. So Add Motion Plus is a new feature with iClone 5.5, uh, let's we'll call this Taunt. And I, iMotion Plus files include facial and body animation. So I'll select these options here, the animation included. I'll just press OK. And you, see it, you can see if I go to my desktop here, there's my taunt.imotion Plus. All right, so I'll go back into iClone first. What I want to do is load up this character in 3D Exchange first. So I'll go to the uh, Actor tab here. We'll select Edit in 3D Exchange. You can see how the process is very quick and uh, the facial animations are very easy to do thanks to uh, iClone's uh, universal muscle system here. Uh, so we don't want to export this. Uh, we'll just say no when I want to export the data because we want to load in this uh, finished character here. And what I want to do is import that uh, iMotion Plus file into the motion library here. So I'll go back down to my desktop, click and drag my taunt.imotion plus oops, into uh, 3D Exchange. And there we go. I can just double click on that. Ah! So what? You can't touch me, because I'm from the internet. 
Okay, so that's the animation I'm gonna export into Unity. So we'll just select add to perform here, and that'll add to my character's perform editor. And from this point on, all we need to do is select uh, export FBX or control X. And we call this guy, let's just call him uh, Cocky Hunter. All right, and include geometry, include animation, and target tool preset, we wanna select Unity 3D Game Engine. And we'll select OK. And that'll export my character, the geometry, as long, as long with the animation, into a single FBX file on my desktop. So we'll just go to my desktop now here. You can see there's my Cocky Hunter taunt.fbx. So what I want to do now is I want to select this and drag it into my Unity project. So we'll go into uh, Unity now and just drag this into my uh, 3DX tutorial folder here, which I have prepared for this tutorial. And that's going to import the assets in. So what I want to do once these assets are completed, I'm just going to set up the uh, my character um, with a rig here um, so it can uh, accept any motion retargeting. And we'll just fix all the material issues there. And uh, and then I can set them up with a uh, really simple uh, animator controller. So there's my Cocky Hunter uh, taunt right there. You can see him in the uh, preview window. I want to set up his rig first, so we'll select he's a humanoid. And uh, you can go into the configure settings, but of course Unity is pretty smart. It can map uh, automatically map most uh, character bone rigs as long as they're logically laid out. And you'll see that in, on the right here, in fact, everything is green, already mapped out. All right, so we don't need to do too much here. We can just go over to uh, done. And of course, you can uh, test out all the uh, animation results as well if you'd like. But uh, let's just get back to our uh, original teddy bear here. And uh, what I want to do now is uh, you can see if I go to the animations tab here, there's my uh, taunt animation. I can press play to preview that space to kind of expand the window there. You can see there's the uh, taunt animation. That's the animation that I'm going to be importing into Unity. So we'll just uh, pause that for now. What we want to do is make sure that the uh, this has already been clamped. We'll loop the pose, make sure it loops. We want to bake the uh, Y transform position, and we'll just select apply. So my next step is simply to import my hunter into my scene. So we'll go ahead and uh, take this hunter, and we'll just drag him, the FBX, into my scene. About, uh, about there should be good. And maybe rotate him around so he's facing our camera here. And what I want to do is make sure we utilize the uh, light probes in this uh, project here uh, to make to make the uh, body a bit uh, bit more beautiful so it looks like it does an eye clone there. All right, so you can see there's my uh, hunter off in the distance there. Now what I want to do is I want to create an animator controller. So I'll just click in this, in this uh, window here and create an animator controller. We'll just call this uh, cocky hunter and animator controller. And what I want to do is make sure we have our cocky hunter selected and we'll drag this uh, Cocky Hunter animator controller into the controller slot. But what I, do, what I want to do first is make sure I double click on this controller and I want to make sure that the uh, my default animation is uh, loaded in there as well. So I'll just select, click and drag my taunt. And you can see it'll, it'll appear as an orange box which means that it's the default motion here. And what I can do now is just press uh, the uh, play button. It'll take up the uh, full screen. And there you go, there's my uh, animation from iClone. Uh, that I exported into Unity in a matter of minutes. So of course you can add the sound afterwards as well. But uh, yeah, that's about the entire process. So thank you for watching this tutorial and hopefully you have fun creating your own games with iClone.